All right, here's our third video with this common situation. We have transactions and there's no key or invoice number and we need to roll it up into individual transactions. Two videos ago we saw worksheet formulas. Last video we saw dynamic spilled array formulas. But this video we get to see the best method of all, Power Query. Now I've already loaded this table into the Power Query editor. It's called Transaction Report. Now the first thing we want to do is we're going to group, so I'm going to right click the date column, group by, advanced, and we want two calculations. The first one is description, and all we want for the time being is please give me all the grouped records together, add aggregation, total sales, and we want the sum, and we want the sum of the amount column. Click OK. Now it doesn't get the grouping correct, but before we change the grouping, let's deal with the calculations. There's aggregate calculation number one and then two. For number one, I want to delete everything after the underscore after each. So I'm going to hit delete. That underscore in each is what brings in the group tables. If I hit enter, we can see sure enough, that's the group records for that date. Again, that's not what we want, but to fix the calculation, let's deal with description. I need to look up the column from a table, which that underscore is. So we use field access operator, type the name of the field, click enter. Now we have a list and we can join the elements from a list using text.combine, open parentheses. There's the text. This is the opposite of text join. The second argument has the separator or delimiter double quote, comma, space, and double quote, close parentheses, click OK. So now we have our two aggregate calculations working. Now we just need to get this grouping to work. Now by default, we're getting one of each, a unique list, but if we come up to the fourth argument, and really the fourth and fifth argument bring real power to table.group. Now it's called group kind, and the default is group kind dot global. That means give me one of each. If I put group kind dot local or zero, which will allow us to group by consecutive occurrences. Now let's just enter this and 214 didn't have consecutive. That's why there's just a joined single item. But down here, there were three nulls in a row. So it joined the group elements. Now it's the fifth argument working with that fourth argument that's really the power. What we want to do in compare, that needs a function with two variables because we're comparing two things. And whatever this compare function delivers, it has to be numbers, not true and false. So in essence, we're going to have ones and zeros. Now the logical test we're going to use is easy. I'm going to ask each element in the original date column are you not null? That'll get it true. All of the nulls will get falses. Only the dates will get true. We'll convert it to ones and zeros and compare will interpret any one as the beginning of the grouping category. So we have to define our custom function and I think of it like scan. There's always an initial value comma and then there's an array to iterate. So I'm going to call our variables initial value and array to iterate. We use our go to operator, and guess what? This is a situation where we're actually never going to use the initial value because the two things we're comparing are the thing in the cell, date or null. We're going to use the not logical operator, and we're going to type in the second element, which is null. Now I need to use array, that's the variable, and then the field access operator, date. Normally we use each and then just the field name in field access operators, but when you're defining variables, the variable has to be in front of the field access operator. Now we say, are you not less than greater than null? Now that gives me a whole column of trues and falses, but the compare argument does not understand trues and falses. So we'll use number dot from and then put a parentheses here and that Simple little formula when I check the checkbox does exactly what we want. The grouping categories, 
the start for the grouping categories. If we look back at the original data set, since there's a 1, 0, 1, a bunch of zeros, the 1 tells this function that's the beginning of the new grouping category. When it sees another 1, which is a duplicate, but because of the 0, it starts counting here, 1, 2, 3, 4. So all of these elements are included in the group. That is a bit of table.group magic. All right, that's solution number three. All right, that's the output for solution number three, Power Query. We had solution number two, Dynamics Build Array, and then number one, good old worksheet formulas. All right, we'll see you next Excel magic trick.